Hi friends! If you want to try painting with your toddler but you're not sure how to start, you're in the right place because I walk you through the whole process today. Painting with toddlers is a wonderful thing and it doesn't have to involve a lot of work on your end, thankfully. You'll increase your chances of having fun quite a lot though if you pay attention to a few important things. So today we'll talk about what you can expect when painting with little ones and about the benefits of creative activities for them. I'll tell you how you can help your toddler get the most out of the creative experience, what they need from you and what they don't, but first let's get started with setting up the space. By the way, here my kid is painting the pieces of a camping set we made out of cardboard. If you're interested in making your own, I created a template for it, which you can download if you click the link in the description. And now let's get on with what you'll need for painting. You'll need some kind of paper. As toddlers and preschoolers haven't yet mastered the fine motor skills needed for fine movements of the hand, they tend to paint with big strokes and use big movements. This means you'll need a big piece of paper. I like to buy our paper in rolls, this one is from Ikea, and I cover my daughter's whole table when she paints so she can have as much freedom of movement as possible. You can also save large pieces of wrapping paper that would otherwise get thrown out and use those, or paint on old newspaper spreads. I often save paper I receive stuffed in packages I order online to use for painting. You'll also need paintbrushes. It's good to have a nice variety so your kid can experiment with different shapes and sizes. I like to use paintbrushes that are made for kids because they have much shorter handles which makes it easier for toddlers to use them. You'll also need some kind of paint, preferably one that's safe for kids because toddlers tend to get paint all over themselves. It's very possible that by the end of the painting session they cover not only their hands but also their faces, their arms, their legs, their bellies or even their back with paint. If your kid tends to put everything in their mouth then definitely choose taste safe paint. In my personal opinion though, if your child is bigger and you can trust them not to put the paint near their face, then you can even let them use your own paints if they're not toxic. Next we'll talk about setting up your painting station. This might sound fancy, but really all you need is a small table and the tools we mentioned before. Depending on your child's preference, a little chair might come in handy. I always keep one nearby for my daughter and sometimes she ends up using it, but most of the time she just enjoys the freedom to walk around the table. When it comes to setting up the space, my two main concerns are safety and mass control. As I already mentioned, we covered the whole table with paper so that I don't have to clean that at least. It's best to set up the table in a room where the floor is easy to clean, but if you can do that, then just cover the floor under the table with something waterproof like a big piece of plastic wrap or a cut-up garbage bag. It's best to set up your painting station away from any walls so that they don't accidentally get splattered on and your little one doesn't touch them with their painty hands. There are plenty of washable paints out there, but if you're worried about your kids' clothes, you can just use an old t-shirt of yours and cover theirs. When you're done, you can just throw it in the washing machine and it won't be a problem if it gets stained. You can also buy art smacks and aprons for kids, or you could even dedicate a set of their own clothes for painting, maybe ones that have holes in them or that don't look very nice anymore. If you take all these precautions, you can let your kid be messy, which they really need if you want to maximize the fun and the benefits of painting. But you won't have to clean for an hour afterwards and they won't cause any lasting damage to your belongings. Okay, so now the fun begins. If you want to help your child's creativity the best way you can, you won't have much to do here other than supervise. You don't have to give directions or find fancy pictures to create. You don't have to tell your kid what to do, in fact, please don't. When it comes to creativity, it's best if you let your child explore and experiment on their own. Just let them do their own thing, they have plenty to discover with the simple tools you provided them with. They can play with colors, textures, shapes, wet paint, dry paint, movement, pressure and a lot more. Even if you think the way they're doing something is not the way to do it, try to resist the urge to interfere. The goal here is not to teach them something, but to create an opportunity for them to discover for themselves. Even if what they're doing is not very practical or effective in your eyes, just let them roll with it. Like if they mix all the colors on the palette together and they paint with brown all the time as a consequence, just let them. It's worth way more if they can come to their own conclusions and discover things for themselves. If you just sit back and watch your toddler paint without any expectations, then you will probably start enjoying it too. It can be really interesting and fun to see how they think and try to figure out what they're working on, what they're trying to find out, what they're discovering. They also put to use what they've learned very quickly, so it's possible that you'll notice some huge jumps between one painting session and the next. If your little one wants to go away and leave off painting for a while, just let them if it's alright with you. 
just wash their hands and whatever else needs to be washed and they can return to finish their work later that day until they feel it's done. When they say it's done, accept it, even if they only painted three strokes. You can reuse that same paper or at least the other side of it next time. And now some advice on how to talk to kids while you're painting. The first thing is try to avoid any kind of statement that makes a judgment, whether it's good or bad. By this I mean avoiding statements like this is beautiful or saying things like I think this looks ugly, just to use the two extremes as examples. What you can do instead is commenting on what your child is doing in the moment, like you're a sports commentator, like saying I see now you're painting with the blue or now I see you're trying to make dots or saying now you're creating lines with the brush. This lets your child know that you are with them but you don't interfere with their processes. Depending on your toddler's age, a painting session can take anywhere from 5 minutes to 3 hours. Like for example, the first time we painted with my daughter it lasted 4 hours and yesterday there was a painting session that lasted for 10 minutes. So I think it's helpful and will save you a lot of frustration if you know that whatever it is for you on a specific day, it's okay. What you're essentially doing if you paint with your kid like this is called process painting and this is a really good way to grow your child's creativity. As you might suspect with this approach it is the process that counts and not the end result. The goal here is not to paint something pretty or recognizable but just to let your kid play and they learn so much by this. It lets them use their creativity and imagination freely and it helps foster self-actualization and self-expression and it lets them trust their own creative thinking. By setting up an environment where they are in charge, you teach them independence. Having authority over some small segment of the world is very important for kids this age. Also, painting is very beneficial for toddlers' fine motor skills, which will be really helpful later when they start learning to write. But if you do large paintings with them, it's great for gross motor skills too. So I think if you pay attention to your kid and find a painting routine that works for you, then both of you will enjoy the experience very much. So to sum it up, it's really very easy, just take a few precautions and then let your kid get as messy as they want. This way they'll have a lot of fun, but hopefully you won't have to do a lot of cleaning afterwards. And one more helpful tip, if your kid tends to get paint all over themselves, then it might be a good idea to have your painting session right before bath time. Just remember to adapt everything to your needs. So I hope you try painting with your toddler and I hope you guys will enjoy it very much. If you do try it, please let me know how it went in the comments below. I also hope this video will help you get off on your painting journey on the right foot and that these tips will make it easy and enjoyable for the both of you. If you think more content on creativity with kids would be useful to you, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!